Hello and welcome, dear learners. Whether you are tuning in to enhance your knowledge, expand your skills, or simply satisfy your curiosity, I am thrilled to have you here for another insightful journey on Python tuples. So, I am Hiraman Sonavani, and today we are venturing into a fascinating world of tuples in Python. From the basic to the advanced, we are set to uncover the hidden gems and shade lights on the complexities of Python tuples. So, as we embark on this educational expedition, I encourage to I, I encourage you to engage, question and absorb. So feel free to hit that like button if you find the value in the content. And I would like to remind again, don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an update from our educational channel. And then remember, learning is kind of a collaborative process. Okay, and I am here to guide you on every step of the way. So, before we plunge head first, make sure that you have your notepads ready and your thinking caps on and your curiosity ignited. So, by end of this video, you will have an understanding of what are tuples in Python and how to and when to use. So, without further ado, let's dive into the tuples in Python. What do we have as a part of today's session? Okay, so, so let's see what are we going to cover. So, the objective of session is like tuples in Python, next session topics. So what exactly are you going to cover when we say tuples? We are going to cover how do we create the tuples with or without duplicates. We are going to cover accessing the tuple elements. Might, might be like in single dimension, multi-dimension tuples. How do we use the negative indexing, indexing on the tuples? How do we find out the size of the tuple? How do we update the tuple? We know it's immutable, but still there is a trick to find update a tuple. How do we unpack the tuples? Then how do we loop the tuples? How do we join the tuples? And what are the different methods allowed on the tuples, right? Let's go to the PyCharm IDE and then let's see how to use that. Okay. So, tuples, right? What is a tuple? Tuple is actually a ordered collection, right? So, when you studied maths, you might have studied ordered pairs, right? Ordered pairs, like you might have done something in XY plane, correct? If I ask you to have one point, let's say X and Y, right? What does this mean? XY is an ordered pair, which is a point which we point on the XY plane. So, tell me. If 2, 3 is a point, is it same as 3, 2 on the plane? No, it will not be, right? See, now if you say this is x, x and y axis, right? If 2, 3 comes here, right? Then 3, 2 will come here, correct? So, both are not equal. That means if we change the order, order is, the element is going to change. That's why we say, Tuple is what? Ordered pair. So, this is a two-dimensional tuple. This is what we call it as a two-dimensional tuple, right? But, what if we want to have a multi-dimensional tuple, right? So, let's say three-dimensional. If it is a three-dimensional, two, three, four, right? If it is a four-dimensional, minus four, five, six, correct? Then, this is how it is going to be, right? And then, multi-dimensional. If you want to have the n-dimensional tuple, right? Then there will be like 4, 6, 7, 9, and you can have the n number of elements. But those are like always, so ordered pairs, or maybe what does it mean? So if you just look at it, right, these are enclosed into these brackets, remember. So the tuples are like ordered collections, remember, right? And once you say 2, 3, let's say, can you change it on the XY plane? No, you cannot change, right? So basically, tuples are ordered collection. Okay, tuples are ordered collection. Yep. 
so how do we create the tuples right let's say how do we create a tuple now we know right if you want to create the list sample list how do we create we basically create in the square brackets correct but if you want to create a tuple if you want to create a tuple the difference is like it has to be in these brackets remember the tuple is always created in this brackets okay so this is a list so we are going to work on the tuple so this is a this is empty empty tub empty tuple there is nothing that's why this is what empty tuple if just maybe try to print it right print sample tuple right what it is going to give us it is going to give us nothing see it is going to give us nothing so the first thing what we saw is a ordered collection and then tuple is created by this way right by putting the everything into these brackets now let's say if i want to add some elements how, how i can basically create a tuple with maybe one element right a tuple with let's say one element singleton correct if i want to create a singleton tuple so what does it mean by singleton tuple a tuple which has only one element a tuple which has only one element let's say this correct so how many elements are here only one correct if i now try to print it right it will give me 56 but is this really a tuple is this really a tuple right let's try to print a type of this singleton tuple if i try to print the type of this it's going to give me hey that's that's not what we meant here right they're saying it integer so this is treated as an integer this is not a tuple why it is not a tuple so there is a trick always remember always remember if there is a single item in a tuple then always end it with what a comma now this will be considered as a tuple and earlier without comma was supposed to be considered as what integer c understood so remember this is the singleton tuple now how you can have the multi multi item tuple right let's say if i put it here like multi item tuple right if i so i can basically add it let's say 56 45 minus 67 now this is a tuple which has multiple items multiple items means how many items there are three right now we don't need to put a type because it's already a tuple we know so when we print here right it is going to give me a all three elements remember now this is a all so what about the mixed type tuples right let's say if we want to have a mixed type tuple right what does it mean i want to have integers as well as let's say i want to have a string okay and i want to have a float as well so this is a mixed tuple of all other data types correct all all or maybe more than that right so let's see if i put it here so how it is going to give me right it will so it is allowed what does that mean so you, you are allowed to have the mixed type tuples too can we have the tuple inside tuple yes we can let's say now i want to have this one tuple and then i want to have another tuple so now what does this mean this is a one tuple and inside that tuple we have one another tuple and this tuple correct now when we try to print it right this is going to be let's say nested type tuple see you can have the same variable name but i just wanted to give you the understanding what exactly this tuple type is right and that's why i'm using those names accordingly so that you understand it correctly okay see now it is a tuple of tuples that's why it is called as a nested tuples okay so so that was the first thing but there is another so ordered collection is something one thing but there is an immutable part is as well right this is immutable collection as well now what is immutable immutable means you cannot change once you created you cannot change it once you created you cannot change now let's say sample 
tuple correct i'm just maybe going to create a sample tuple right now if i try to change the second element to let's say 10 now what does this mean this is mean this means accessing a second element from the tuple now this is a zeroth element this is the first element this is a second element so now i'm trying to change this value to what 10 we have already seen this in the lists how do we access the elements of the sequence data types right now let's try to print it 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 should basically shout at this place itself see what does it mean it says look at try to read the error message okay see this is what it means says most recent call from the last where it failed it failed in this file right python underscore tuple dot py so python underscore tuple dot py is where you need to go then it says line number 11 line number 11 is what this this line it has failed on and then this is the line what is the error in this line the, they are saying that this is the error type error what does that mean the tuple object does not support the item assignment that means you cannot change it not cannot change cannot modify what does that mean this is not mutable and not mutable means what immutable okay so that's why we say it's a immutable so we saw it is ordered collection we saw it is a immutable right so that's how it is now we already saw how do we access the elements correct if you want let's say uh, if i have the tuple with more elements correct 89 now if i want to access c we already saw this is the zeroth index this is the first two three four five six seven right so if i want to access let's say sixth element so sixth element means what it is actually at the fifth location because it starts with the zero correct so it will say like this 34 correct so how, that's how maybe you can access it so basically you can access the elements of tuple using indexing this is called as indexing similar to the list indexing starts with what zero that's what actually we saw and that is a first element zero zero means first element now let's look at the next part so we saw how to create tuples we saw how do we access elements of tuple let's see what is a negative indexing this is the same way right what we learned for the list negative indexing and slicing all works same okay so if i just want to maybe the print the last element let's say 89 the last element starts with what minus one so this is 81 if i want to print the third last element i need to say minus three so it will print the third last element if i want to print the eighth last element right so minus eight so two what about minus nine will that work look at the error it says index out of range so it started with minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 minus 6 minus 7 minus 8 but it could not find minus 9 so it raised an error remember so index out of range is a one of the error which we already saw in list as well okay so this is how basically you can have negative indexing now what about let's say if i just want so we saw that right and then say slicing so if i just want to print the 5 67 and 89 so 5 is the element at which which index if you look at here right 5 is at second index and 89 is at fourth index but when so there is a way to print it that's how we can print it why because the first when we this is operator let's say this is operator the first element the first index is included but the last index is not included 
so if we want to print up to 89 we need to go one more one beyond that right so it is going to now print it like 56789 but if we just say 4 what mistake are we going to make we are going to skip 89 and we will not get the result what we desire so always remember the end number is not included this number is included so if you want all of the elements after seconds then just keep that empty and it will give you everything after two second index correct now if you want all of the list just put it as it is right this is how it is going to be okay so that's how the slicing works so how do we use the slicing or the range of the negative indices then let's say if i want minus 4 to minus 1 so what it is going to give us 89 34 56 so minus 4 is where this is minus 1 right then minus 2 minus 3 so where is minus 4 right and minus 4 is here correct this is minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 but as we say this is not included so this 89 is not included so this will be the thing minus 4 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 is not included remember okay then how do we check how do we check if the how to check if element is present into tuple how do we check if the element is present into tuple so that's a simple method there is a so if condition we are going to look at in detail but there is an in operator there is an in operator we have right let's say if 56 in sample tuple print 56 is present in tuple correct now what it is going to check it will take this 56 and in is the operator which will tell where to search it will search is 56 here yes so it is going to execute this else we can just say 56 is not present in tuple so see so 56 is present in tuple correct now let's try to take it as a variable rather right x is equal to 45 let's check x is in sample tuple right and then here let's try to print like this so that it will be generic when we change the value of x it will basically change the answer to now 45 is 45 here part of it no so it should go this condition will be false if this is false this will not be executed and this will be executed only so see 45 is not present in tuple correct so that's how it is going to be so that is how you can check whether the element item exists in a list or not now how do we update the tuples how do we update the tuples update tuples right now now you might say sir you said it is immutable correction and then now you are talking about update how it is possible correct so there is a trick so as we know once a tuple is created you really cannot change its value so tuples are like unchangeable or immutable as it is also called but there is a workaround you can convert the tuple into list so what is a workaround convert tuple to list and then modify so we, you are not changing the actual tuple you are changing the converted thing correct now let's say if this is a sample tuple right then a sample list we can say and then convert that how it is going to be sample tuple 
Now, what does this mean? The sample tuple is the another variable which is immutable, but now sample tuples with all these elements, we converted that to list and then we converted into what? List. So, sample list is a what? A list. Now, when you print sample list and when you print sample tuple, how those differ? Let's see. Correct. I'm just going to delete this. See, the first one is enclosed into the square brackets and the next one is enclosed into what? A curly bracket. Not curly, the uh, open and closed brackets. Correct? So, this is what the difference is. Now, since this is a list, you can modify it. Correct? You can say sample list here after printed. Right? You can just maybe change it here. Right? Let's say sample list first element i want to change to minus 100 so now the 4 will be changed to what minus 100 correct now when you look at see this was the earlier list this was the tuple now the list changed the first element to minus 100 but the tuple remains same but if you try to apply the same operation on the tuple, it is not possible because the tuple is immutable. Correct. Now, this is not possible. It will give the error on the line number 20. See, it gives the error on the line number 20. It says that the tuple object does not support an assignment because the tuple is not at all. You cannot basically add it, right? And then whatever operations you can perform on the list as we saw in the last video you can perform on this list you can append add new elements okay then uh, you can also append how so, so what uh, let's maybe take one more thing right what i think can we add a tuple to tuple can we add a tuple to tuple? Is it possible to add tuple to tuple? What do you think? Yes, you are actually allowed to add tuples to tuple so that if you want to add one item or many items, create a new tuple with that items and add, add it to the existing tuple. Now, how it is going to be? Let's see. Okay. Now, let's take this is a sample tuple. Correct. If this is a sample tuple and then let's say this is a sample tuple one correct uh, let me just remove this all part we are going to see how do we add tuples right so this is a tuple one and then sell up a tuple two let's say tuple two is going to be minus 34 minus 45 minus 67 now i want this tuple one basically to be updated with this tuple 2 how i can do that so tuple 1 is equal to tuple 1 plus tuple 2 now what it is going to do let's see if it is possible So what I'm doing, this is one tuple, this is another tuple and I'm just maybe adding this to this tuple, correct. So see it is allowed. So though we say, see when we printed before the update add, it is this and then when we printed after adding right tuple 1 and tuple 2 combined, it basically gave this. So remember, you we cannot basically change the individual atoms of the tuple, but you can add another tuple to the tuple. Okay. Now, as we know, the tuples are unchangeable. What does that mean? You cannot basically remove the elements from it, right? So, to if you want to remove the elements from tuple, again you need to use the same workaround. What what do you need to do? You need to convert that tuple to the list, and then use the remove method of the top uh, list to delete it right now there is one method del now see now this is a complete tuple right and then if you want 
if, if you are having a let's say if you are having a code of 1000 lines if you are having a code of 1000 lines and then this tuple is only needed for first 200 lines so rest of the 1000 lines like this right 1000 lines of code correct and then tuple is only needed for first 200 lines first 200 lines what does that mean for rest of the 800 lines we don't need this tuple so then what do we do we can just simply say del del means what delete that sequence right so this is going to delete this tuple and then when you try to print the tuple one it will here it will print it but here it will say error why because here it is deleted what does that mean deleted means it has gone from the memory so here it won't be able to find out what is tuple one see so now it says tuple one is not defined and which line line number 20 line number 20 is this correct why because we deleted already okay remember so del keyword can delete the complete tuple entirely remember so that was all about update correct update the tuples right convert the tuple to the list and then modify or add the tuple to tuple correct now let's look at the next part what do we mean by unpack the tuples correct what do we mean by unpack the tuples i am just maybe going to write it here okay unpack tuple see what do we mean by unpack and pack pack means what putting more things together into one bundle correct and unpack means what separating those correct just remember this concept so when we create a tuple we basically normally assign what values to it that is called as a collect that is called as a what a packing of tuples so packing of tuples is like this so when you let's say fruits right fruits and if you add apple banana and cherry let's say correct now what you are doing you are packaging all these three fruits into one package that package is called as a fruits that is what what we call it is what packing of tuples correct but how do we unpack this so there is a mechanism in python you can basically unpack as well right unpacking the elements so we are allowed to extract the values back into the variables so basically from fruits you can just maybe extract those values into the variables and that is called as unpacking how do we do do this let's say now we know apple is what which apple green apple correct then banana is what yellow banana correct and then cherry is what red and then fruits now what it is going to do what it is basically going to do it will copy the first element into the green so apple green will be assigned with apple the yellow will be assigned with banana and the red will be assigned with cherry and then when we try to print green it will print apple when we try to print yellow it will print banana uh, when you try to print red it is going to print it what a cherry see is it so this is called as unpacking unpacking means what extracting the elements from the list and storing into what a variables okay now this is called as unpacking so there is one more thing let's say now have you ever used the regular expressions now in python file unpacking you can use regular expression star star means what more than one elements correct so let's say if you add here strawberry more elements we are going to add right 
raspberry right now what i did i actually added two more elements but we know that this is green this is yellow but these all three are what red so you can just see here red star so what it is going to do not red star it should be star red right what it is going to do it will basically assign green with apple yellow with banana but red with this list complete list so when here the single atom will be printed single atom but here it will be a list let's see see do you see this one so that means star star means what if you want more than one atoms to be unpacked into the one variable now let's say i want a last element to be in, in a red only only raspberry should be a part of the red whereas these three whereas this three are I, I i basically want to be part of what let's say tropic then what i will going I, i'm gonna use i will basically use it warrior star so this will be what let's say tropic what it is going to have now the first one will be the apple the last one will be raspberry but everything else in between is going to be what a tropic see so this is how you can use the star now what if you use like this see now there are only three you are basically only trying to unpack the three elements where whereas in fruit there are how many elements five is that going to work let's see no why because it says too many values to unpack expected three only and then when you unpack this will unpack everything this will unpack this all five things and now to unpack the five things there has to be five variables on this side but it is not able to find it is it says only unpack the three but it is not able to unpack those things here remember so that's how the unpacking works so hope you know now how to unpack unpack right now let's see how do we loop how do we loop a tuple how do we loop a tuple we already saw packaging and packaging packaging all right so how do we loop a tuple we will use the same um, tuple rather now if i want to print all of the elements in tuple so there are methods you can use for loop you can use while loop okay and you can use uh, do while loop uh, but maybe for now we are going to cover all the loops in very detail for now just assume this as like this right the for loop is like for x in what fruits so what it is going to do it will basically iterate over fruits and everything will be stored the first x will be apple then in next iteration x will be banana then cherry strawberry and raspberry and then this whole code will be executed five times and then it will basically print all of the elements one by one okay this is how basically you can use it you can also use it like indexing to loop over like this so if for index in you can say range of length fruits and then you can just maybe print fruits tuple fruits index uh that's all okay now what it is going to do what it is going to do let's maybe just execute first it says the tuple object is not callable line number 20 so here what did we miss we basically miss the thing index so the range length in an index and then we are trying to print it here index right
so what mistake did we make we are trying to make a call function call so this is something right we need to we don't need to have the extra brackets there okay so so you need to have a troubleshooting skills as well so what I basically it's d it did it first found the length of the fruit the what is the length of the fruit one two three four five correct and then it took a range of first five numbers and then with that index 0 to 5 it basically printed fruits 5 so first 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 and then 5 and then it will basically print all the elements like this so this is how you can basically use the loops now how do we basically join the two tuples this we already saw it right adding one tuple to another tuple and that's how basically we can add it now let's say this is the fruits one right this is the fruits and numbers let's say if i want to have the numbers number tuple okay uh fruits tuple i'll rename it right so that we understand it correctly numbers tuple is going to be let's say 145 67 89 or 678 right now what i want to do i want to basically create the third tuple join the tuple so how do i join the tuples i just maybe need to add it like this i want to join fruits tuple with number tuple okay now when i try to print a join tuple it will basically print this and this in together see apple all the way to raspberry raspberry and then one up to 89 so that's how basically you can join the tuples you can also multiply the tuples now what do we mean by join tuples right and then multiply tuple multiply tuple when i say multiply tuple you can multiply tuple with a number you can't multiply tuple with what a tuple another tuple so let's say so you might have a question like sir can we do like this fruits tuple star means multiply with number tuple no it's not possible see it's going to give error what it says can't multiply the sequence by non in type tuple right what you can basically do you can just say let's say two or let's say three right what now it is going to do fruits tuple will be multiplied by three now when we say fruits tuple will be multiplied by three what it is going to give now we are no no longer using number tuple, so I'm going to comment it out. See, so this is once, then twice, and then thrice. So there will be like this will be added three times. If we say number tuple right now, instead of this, let's take this as a number tuple, right? We only multiplied by two. So when we are multiplying with this two, right? This will be again added two at the end. See, that is twice. If I say five times, so all it will basically be added like this. This tuple will be added five times. So this is how basically we can multiply the tuples with the scalar. Okay, multiply tuple by a scalar rather, I will say, or integer, more specific. So that's how we can basically multiply the tuples. Now, we saw let let's look at what multi-dimensional tuple multi-dimensional tuple or nested tuple this is the same way this is the same way we are going to basically have it the way we looked at into lists right i'm, I'm just maybe going to create like this now tuples into tuple correct i'm just maybe going to remove this part now the join tuple or let's change the name as a nested tuple right so that maybe it will be easier for us to understand what topic we are covering here correct so when we try to print the nested tuple right it is going to print it like this but what if i say like this 
so it will go into the nested tuple and the zeroth element it will print which is the zeroth element zeroth element is this all three remember okay so it will basically print like this and then if i say one element right what it is going to print this will print like this now how those are represented right this are represented as a what table these are represented as a table let's say right so how it will be it is going to be like the this is uh, how many are there like five and then four right five by four so it is going to be like if you want a zero and first so there will be two rows zero row and first row okay and in zero row there will be apple there will be banana there will be cherry there will be strawberry there will be a raspberry and then in what first row there will be what one four five five six seven eight and eighty nine now this is zero and then when we talk about columns this will be first this will be what two this will be what three and this will be what four so see now if you want to print the apple right you need to use zero and zero if you want to use the one if you want to print the one you need to say one and zero right i'm just maybe going to uh, keep this as a comment so that we can use it for the reference so this is how it is represented as a matrix this is how it is represented as what a matrix remember so if you want to print the strawberry what you will say zero and three so if you say zero and three here it will print the strawberry see see strawberry if i want to print the 678 so where will be 678 this is the second element and this is the third element correct so for 678 i need to say one and two so if i say here one and two it will give me a 678 see easy so that's how we can use the nested tuples and iterate over the nested tuples. Now, what are the methods allowed on the tuples? What are the methods allowed on the tuples, right? Methods allowed on tuples. Now, there are only two methods allowed on the tuples. Which one? Account and index. See, if you say sample tuple, right let's maybe have some random tuple 78 minus 90 hello correct and if you just maybe try to print sample tuple and sample tuple when you say dot it will tell you like see now the only count and index are allowed other are a kind of maybe a, a built-in object functions see so how do we use the count can we use count as it is is this possible let's try if you run it what it says the tuple count takes exactly one argument what argument does it take you need to tell them which element you want to count 56 so if you want 56 to be counted it will say 56 is there one time only okay and if you say let's say 56 here as well so it will now give you two why because it found 56 twice there okay and what if you say now a string hello it found hello once but what if something which is not already there right hell is not there right so it will say no it did not find so zero times right don't get confused with the count and the length if you want to find out the length of the sample tuple the length of the tuple is found using the length function that is object one okay so six the length of this is what six so the count is used to find out the specific value how many times the specific value present or comes or has basically is present into the current tuple okay now what is the index 
how do we basically use the index so again let's try to use the index as it is without any arguments right see what does it says index expected at least one argument now if you look at the count error if you look at the count error and index error that is a difference the count sets exactly one argument for the count you need to give only one argument not more than that so index basically returns index needs argument first right and index we can use like value we need to give element right if i say 56 what it is going to give it will first search 56 in this tuple and then wherever it finds the first occurrence of 56 it will basically return that index so index of the 56 is going to be what one correct if i say minus 90 it is going to give me a three yeah so that's how we can use basically the index value index function right and what if there is the, the let's say an element which we are providing as an argument to index it does not exist there what it will give it will basically throw an error what it says it's not in tuple right that's what actually maybe the desired functionality of a index function of tuple now what if i want to check whether there is a second occurrence of 56 so you can basically just give like 56 but what i want a second occurrence index index of a second occurrence of 56 so it will give me like 5 now it skipped this one it gave me this and what if i say third is it going to work is there a third occurrence of 56 there are only two 56 are there right but it is still will give me a last one remember so that's how we can basically use the index of a uh, index function on the tuple okay so let us go back to the tuples right so uh, presentation that's all actually i had it from this video so we saw all of these topics we saw creating accessing negatives indexing size of updating unpacking uh iterating join multiple tuples and the methods on the tuples as a part of this presentation so the next agenda and the next video will be on the python sets and once we cover all of the data types right we will have a detailed one separate session on only exercises dealing with or how to identify right which particular data type to be used or data structure to be used when you are dealing with the examples so guys i would like to remind you that if you haven't subscribed yet make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the latest no notifications of latest videos and just make sure that if you like the video right click that like button and then make sure that you add add some comment right so that maybe i know the watcher of the video actually like the video like the video right feel free to comment just to make sure that right it will basically add more enthusiasm for me to add more contents and to come up with like more exciting contents on all of the topics which i'm going to cover as a part of this educational video or educational channel so i wish you happy learning with the gravity thank you